Hello to every skiver here and welcome to the Skyrim Whisper. I hope you are all doing well and that you are ready to put your mind into the depth of Skyrim's lore. Today we are going to talk about big old Alduin and his central and unique ability to resurrect his fellow fallen dragon buddies. Obviously, if you ever play in the main quest, you know well that during a blade in the dark, you meet Alduin for the second time. At the top of Kingsgrove, you see Alduin kinda chilling above an ancient dragon burial mound. Then he shattered the rock above Saruknir remains, whose skeleton emerged and melted itself. Alduin uses a shout to properly restore Saruknir's body, resurrecting him. This is when we learn that Alduin can resurrect other dragons, and that is why dragons spawn everywhere these days. The scene is rather impressive, but we don't have any in-game explanation. Even theories from, heck, the great archivist Usburn, for example, nor it is mentioned on Alduin's wall, which is strange because it seems that it's a unique ability and that it should have been used during the Draconic War. After all, if Alduin can resurrect his fellow dragons, I don't see why he wouldn't have used this at advantage when Nors slaughtered their masters. His power to devour the souls of the dead is mentioned several times in the game, and his meteorite shout is seen in the past thanks to the Elder Scrolls through the Dragon Break. However, this big terrifying power of resurrection is only witnessed by accident, and no NPC nor book speak about it. So I wondered why, and I was trying to make sense of this power. One thing that questioned me was the fact that, visually, the animation of the resurrection is the opposite of the dragonborn absorbing a dragon soul, which led to the interpretation that Alduin is in fact giving back a soul to the dragon. We have to take a moment to analyze this interpretation. We know that the soul of a dragon is strong, cannot be trapped in any way, like, for example, a soul gem, and that it is eternal, immortal. The only thing that can normally absorb the soul of a dragon is another dragon. And so can the dragonborn, for he is a dragon soul himself in a mortal body. It is also stated that the only way to really kill a dragon is to absorb its soul. Dragon's burial mound have killed dragon in them, yes. And the skeleton can recall the one that a dragon leaves when their soul is absorbed. However, remember, during the Merethic era, the only known dragonborn seems to be Mirak, and he did not help during the Draconic War. He instead turns to Hermes Mora to gain power and by so defy the dragon cult, but he is not the one behind the dead dragons of Skyrim Burial Mound. During the Merethic era, Nordics only have the power of the voice, but there was no dragonborn to permanently kill dragons, which means that either other dragons had absorbed their soul, which is possible as Syrian dragons decided to fight with humans, leaded by this old big buddy Parthunax, or their soul were not absorbed at all. With this last statement, it means that the dragons are indeed skeletons but by the natural process of decay, their soul just floating around or trapped in their blood body. There is also the possibility that Alduin himself has absorbed the soul of his own servants, literally giving their soul back, for he still have them. It can be a great way to show his supremacy or to save some of his fellow dragons. But what seems to contradict this theory is the fact that the skeletons are moving before Alduin gives their physical form back. It is a sign that their soul is still in their skeleton, or around. 
only waiting for an external force to unify the body and the soul again, which would be the exact way the shout of Alduin works, which reinforced the importance of the Dragonborn, the only one who can prevent dragons to be resurrected this way by eating their very soul, disconnected the link between soul and body forever. It would be great if there was not an exception found in the game. In the labyrinth, you can find a skeletal dragon moving of his own. He can use shouts, which seems to indicate that he has a soul. But when you kill him, no soul is absorbed, as he was clearly dead. Only a pile of bone moving around, but when you absorb a dragon soul, the skeleton is clearly inert. So why is this skeletal dragon able to move with no soul? Well, friend, I don't have the answer to that. But maybe it's not that he is moving of his own, really. But it's an external force that's puppeting everything. Maybe it's the deed of a powerful mage, the result of an enchantment, or even that it's only to propose an interesting fight for the player. If anyone has an idea, please leave a comment, so that we can solve this mystery together. Now, I want to focus on the shout itself that Alduin is using. In Salognir resurrection scene, we can hear two different shouts. One that explodes the ground to free Salognir's skeleton, which is certainly the well-known Fustruda shout. Then, Salognir speaks and moves by himself, even before Alwyn gives him flesh and scales back, which seems to confirm the theory of the soul just chilling around since the Merolithic era, and then the resurrection shout itself. Sland, Tid, Vo. Which translates into flesh, time, and do. What is interesting here is that no soul, nor death, nor even a union act appears in the shout. It does not sound like a resurrection shout to me, rather a time travel thing or an alteration magic thing. He is literally undoing the effect of time on the flesh. It's not a healing shout nor creating a new body, but nullify time itself. Is it fitting for the twilight god Alduin, as he embodied the end of time, to form a new Kalpa? Or isn't it odd? Because end of time is only destruction of the present, so that time can begin anew. I feel a strange contradiction between the firstborn of the dragon god of time Akatosh and the fact that he can undo what time has caused. It almost feels like he goes against Akatosh himself to serve his own purpose. Why, as a literal god that can end a whole Kalpa, he will need his ancient servants back? Why? Will the other dragons serve him to end the Kalpa and they will gain nothing in it? During the Merethic era, Alduin was there. Not to end any Kalpa, but to dominate dragons and humans alike, creating a whole cult. That means that Alduin's apparition does not always coincide with his function of world eater. The shout of resurrection seems very antagonistic with this function. He brings back his ancient kingdom in a way. If we remember what I stated at the beginning of the video, this flesh, time, and shout is never mentioned in Alduin's history. I wonder if it's not for a good reason. Maybe Alduin didn't have or know this shout before, but that is a consequence of him being cast out of time itself by an Elder Scroll. After all, it created a dragon's break, which is a break in the flow of time, which links both the Merethic era, when dragons' bodies were well and not taken by decay, and the fourth era, 
where Alduin is back. Parthunax mentioned that dragons were really sensitive and have a special weakness to time. What would be the consequences of a dragon, especially Alduin as he is the end of time embodied, being cast out of time or in the flow of time, only to reappear thousands of years later? For him, the time that has passed is irrelevant. He felt it in his own being what undoing time means. And we know that a speaker can learn a new shout by engraving the very meaning of his concept in his being. Maybe Alduin has learned a new shout because he lived a new experience. In fact, it's almost like by shouting slend, tid, vo to dragon's body, he gives them the same experience as him, bringing them back from the Merethic era, just behind the dragon's break. However, there is one possible mention of this shout in Skyrim's history. In ancient Nordic pantheon, Orke, the snake god of mortality, which is an adversary god trying to trick Nordics, summoned the ghost of Alduin to eat the lifespan of Nordic people. This was during the reign of Ismir Wolfart, believed to be a dragonborn. Alduin ate the lifespan so that Nordics can only live six years, although it is said that they had the same lifespan as elves back then. Ismir prayed to shore so he can deliver his people, and this is exactly what Shor did. He fought Alduin's ghost form and won, redirected a part of Orkay's trickery on the orc's lifespan. During the fight between Alduin's ghost form and Shor, Ismir learned a new thume by watching them, which allows him to return the Nord back to their ancient selves. It had the terrible consequences to kill him, but Nords were saved. There is no precision of what this shout may be, but its effect is to return bodies to their initial state, as Nords were turned into children and then returned back into adults. This shout is described as how to shake what the dragon just did. As the name shows, the shout reveals things back, and it was aimed to specifically restore the body. It is also a common trope that dragon in the Elder Scrolls universe is a synonym of time. It is not because Alduin is the dragon that causes the Nords to have short lifespan that the dragon in the shout only points out Alduin. Sure it is, I think we cannot doubt about it. But words, especially in draconic language, have very important meanings. Why don't you use the Alduin name directly in the shout, if it was only to reverse back his deed? Like how to shake what Alduin just did. After all, there are dragons' name in shouts, especially to invoke them. It would be much, much more precise and efficient to pronounce Alduin's name in a shout than just his species. I think that how to shake what the dragon just did can be seen as how to shake, so maybe reverse or contradict what the dragon, which means time, has done. How to reverse or contradict what time has done, which is really, really similar to flesh, time, undo, that Alduin uses, even in the effect of the shout. Again, it's not about soul, there is no word specific to dragon in the shout that Alduin uses, it only focuses on body and contradict what time has done to it. The fact that Ismir Wolfarth learned the shout by assessing Alduin's fight against Shore is revelant here. 
don't forget that all of that was after the events of the Draconic War and that it's Alduin's costly form that he's fighting. He is supposedly casted out by the Elder Scroll at the moment of the fight. If we link that to the previous theory about how the Elder Scroll affected Alduin, enough to make him create a new shout, then it is not absurd to think that Ismir witnessed this very shout and used it to reverse the effect of time on Nor's bodies. Well, my little skivers, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Don't hesitate to share your thoughts about it and to bring up your own theories on this topic. If this thematic interests you more, please give a try to the video of Mr. Rex about the Dragonborn possible ability to resurrect dragons. This video made me think and I believe he understood really, really, really well what the meanings of Words of Powers are in the Elder Scrolls universe. I will put the link in the description as well. I wish you a great day and see you in the next video.